now at uh, problem 12, which is our second example problem uh, using SRK equation of state. Um, so use the SRK equation to answer the following. So A, 5,000 kilograms of butane is to be stored in a tank at 60 PSI and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the required tank volume? Okay, um, so this is just like the, the last problem. Um, so basic idea being, so we're given uh, mass, right, same as moles, pressure, uh, and temperature, okay? So the idea being that, you know, I can readily go from mass to moles um, via my molecular weight so that now, um, so I know, uh, what is it, N times uh, molecular weight is equal to mass, uh, so... Um, N is equal to mass divided by molecular weight. Okay, so I can readily get N. And so then required tank volume, V total, is going to be equal to N times V. Uh, so key then will be getting V. How do I get V? Well, V, I'm going to get V in my equation of state for real fluids. V is equal to ZRT over P. We know temperature you know, pressure, okay, so the problem boils down to calculating Z. We're going to calculate Z via a cubic equation of state. So thinking about my cubic equation of state as a black box, okay, my required inputs are going to be TP along with the parameters TC, PC, and omega, and out will come, in this case, a Z and then V. Okay, so Z or V, whichever one you want to think about. Cool. All right, so now subtleties uh, in A. First would be we're given some saturation information. Uh, so first, what phase do I have? Uh, phase is important so that if you get more than one real root, so if you're close to uh, coexistence, uh, determining which root uh, to choose, so which value of Z or V to use. So we're told that saturation temperature, so at 60 PSI, uh, TSAT is 87.45 degrees Fahrenheit. So the same pressure, my temperature is greater than the corresponding saturation temperature. So it must be that I have a vapor. Okay. Um, and at 70 degrees C, well, hold on, let's be. So, so at 60 PSI, so at this pressure, oh, our temperature is less than uh, saturation uh, temperature. So since T is less than Tsat, it must mean that we have a liquid. Um, just as, you know, at the same temperature. So at that temperature, Psat's 45.33 PSI. Our pressure is greater than saturation pressure. So in this case, we must have a liquid. Okay. Okay, so we have a liquid. So that just tells us what route to choose. Um, and then, yeah, we can go ahead and solve it. Okay, um, so you can watch the, the last video, okay, but, you know, a couple of subtleties is uh, TC, when you look it up in the back of the book, is going to have units of Kelvin. Uh, PC is going to have units of bars. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is we'll take our pressure, um, which is in PSI, and we'll want to convert that to bars, and we'll take our temperature, uh, which is in degrees Fahrenheit, and convert that to Kelvin. Okay. Remember, you always need to use absolute temperature, so don't take the critical temperature and convert that to something like degrees C or Fahrenheit, because um, whenever you have a calculation that's going to involve a reduced temperature, or even just think about your you know, ideal gas equation of state, uh, absolute temperature units need to, need to be used. Okay. So um, actually, I won't go and compute this since um, uh, we demonstrated this in, in the last problem, um, but bigger thing here would be you'd have to look up the conversion factors to go from PSI to bar. Uh, in degree Fahrenheit to uh, uh, Kelvin. Um, but then once you have that, uh, the calculation is straightforward. You can then use the SRK equation of state code directly to calculate V. If you get more than one V from your code, you're going to choose the smallest one. Uh, then once you have V, you can go ahead and calculate... Um, well, so once you have V, we're given mass. Okay, so mass of molecular weight we can use to get N. Then N times V will give you V total. Right, so then you're going to have the total volume. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Then B, uh, B we could tackle a couple different ways. 
but looking at B, since the temperature in the summer can get as high as 95 degrees Fahrenheit, determine the pressure that the tank must withstand to avoid uh, rupture. Okay, so this is the same tank as A. Um, so the way I view it is um, we're given temperature. Temperature is this 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and we know V, right? So um, from the last problem, we just calculated V. And, well, we calculated the total volume and, and hence the, the molar volume. But if this is a closed tank, uh, even if I increase the temperature, so I know as temperature increases, pressure is going to increase in my, my closed tank, um, but the molar volume is going to remain constant, right? The total number of moles in my system will remain constant. The volume is going to remain constant. So the molar volume I calculated in A will still be my molar volume um, in B. Okay. So now the first question is always, can I solve this problem? So if I have a single component, single phase system, I have two degrees of freedom. So I'm spe I have two intensive variables here that are known, T and V. So first, yes, the, the problem is solvable. Okay, so now how do I solve for P? Well, you kind of have uh, two ways. Okay, one would be if I look up at my black box from A, okay, and I want to use the provided MATLAB code. Well, the code is set up so that I have inputs of T and P, okay, then out will come V. So I could, in theory, keep guessing different values of P until my code returned, you know, my known V. Right? I could do that. So I'd fix T at uh, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, converting it to Kelvin, and then just keep iterating on P until my code returned a value of, of V. Um, and, you know, you could set that up using, say, F0 or F solve, um, or you could just iterate. Okay? Um, and and that would would be a viable solution. Okay. The other way would be is I'm going to flip over. I, I opened up our notes. Um, this is our third set of notes posted online. Um, and actually, in this case, since volume is known, I could go to our uh, SRK expression, which is explicit in P. Um, and so I know RT. Uh, I know V. And so I would just need to calculate little a and little b. Okay. But when I calculate little a and little b, um, and I guess big omega too, right? But if I calculate little a, little b, and big omega... I can then just directly plug that into my um, SRK equation, which is explicit in P, uh, and directly solve for it. Okay, so that would probably be easiest, uh, directly solving for P. Or again, if you wanted to use the provided MATLAB code, okay, and you think of it as a black box, um, you're just going to have to iterate on P's until you solve for VV, which is the same as your known V. Okay, um, hope that helps.